And a very good morning to you boys and girls. Welcome along. It's Friday the 21st of June 2013. Welcome to uh, this morning's United Kingdom Talk. Yes, if it's 10.30 UK time on Friday the 21st of June where you are, then you are with us live this morning and you can join in by uh, three ways. I have a Skype. My Skype username is all one word, Chris Reardon. C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Or indeed, there's a phone number as well. O two O. Oh, it will, it will be as soon as I put this. There we are. That's working now. Uh, there's a phone number as well. O two O eight one double three six three five eight. OK, O two O eight one double three six three five eight. They're the ways you can join in today. <coughs> I've got coughing already. I've forgotten to do something. What have I forgotten to do? Oh, yes. Online radio shows. There we are. Got to put the adverts up. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, there's, <laughs> otherwise there'd be no one there. Uh, uh, Wendy is there already. Good morning, Wendy. Wendy's here already. A Barry Manilow fan. Wendy, what do you know about um, uh, Harmony? Which is the uh, new? But I say new. He's, he's actually written it. I think it's, it's it's he's had it for a long time. He wrote it a while ago. Uh, Barry Manilow has written uh, a musical harmony, and I do believe it's opening. Oh, <clears throat> I did see this. Uh, is it Atlanta? Oh, hang on, I can look that up, can't I? One second. What do you know about harmony? Anything? I think that's starting soon. Let's have a look. Barry Manilow harmony. Are you a Manilow fan? Oh, of course you are. Everyone is a Barry Manilow fan. I even saw Harry. St I even saw Harry. S Harry. St oh, hang on. Harry Styles from One Direction was actually wearing a Barry Manilow T-shirt um, a few weeks ago. Did anyone else see that? Oh yes, he was wearing a Manilow T-shirt. Now let's have a look. Um, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. It says, the wait is finally here. Barry and Bruce's... Who's Bruce? I don't know who Bruce, Bruce is. Is this one of Barry's friends? Barry and Bruce... Uh, I'm, I'm getting this from the, uh, the Manilow Facebook page. Uh, Barry and Bruce's beloved musical Harmony is coming to the stage of Atlanta's Alliance Theatre. I knew it was Atlanta, you see. I haven't been there myself. Have you been to Atlanta? Apparently it's the, ma the world's maddest airport. I've not been there yet. Anyway, uh, it's coming to the stage of Atlanta's Alliance Theatre. It says, as you know, Harmony tells the compelling story of the comedian Harmonists. They were the first sensational boy band. Now, I've always wanted to be a boy band. I absolutely have. You know, sometimes, I, mean, I must admit now, you know, when I watch them prancing all over the stage and singing at the same time, I don't know if I could do that anymore. Not with my feet. Not with my feet. Oh, by the way, talking of my feet, I'm afraid today's show is restricted to an hour. How can I do it? How can I restrict myself to just an hour? But I've got to because I've got to go hospital later on um, in London for them to look at my feet. So uh, I, I will only be here uh, today for an hour. All the way into a uh, Hampstead. I go to the Royal Free Hospital and they're going to look at my feet. I hope they're going to do something as well, because I'm fed up walking around like a blooming cripple. I have to go to the stairs. I, do, I have to go down the stairs. Have you got a cat? Does she go down the stairs one at a time? Right, well, that's why I, how I have to go down. Obviously not on all fours. You know, I, I don't put two hands down in front of me on the floor. And then the two, I don't go down like on all fours, but I have to go down, look, one foot down on the step, the next one down on the same step. Next one down. And this has been going on for weeks now. I think, um, March, March, and I've kind of, oh, let it go, let it go, it get better, it get, well, it ain't getting better, yeah, and it's an awful thing, I've never had a problem with my feet, never, and then when you suddenly can't walk properly anymore, it's awful, so I hope they're going to be able to do something about that, I really do, anyway, back to this story here, um, the first sensational boy band, I wonder, uh, perhaps I should start a boy band, what would it, what should it be called, any suggestions? What could, what could a boy band that I'm in be called? And what part would I be? Do you have like a lead in the boy bands or do they all take their own, their own sort of, um, uh, turn in being at the front? I'm just trying to think now when you see like, what, I mean, 
take Boys Own for example, you would say that Ronan Keating was the lead, wouldn't you? Would you say there was a lead in Westlife? No, I don't think you would. One Direction, you could say their lead is that Harry Styles, because he's the one that's in the paper all the time, isn't he? But the others do sing as well. I don't know. Anyway, any suggestions of what we could call my new boy band, or, or the boy band, not necessarily my boy band, but the boy band I'm in. Any suggestions? Get them in on the email, OK? My email address, if you want to join in, whether you're watching us live or recorded today, is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.uk. We need to form a boy band. Wouldn't it be fabulous? We could have a, you know, a sort of an older boy band. Would that work? Say there could be me... <clears throat> You know, and, and and perhaps some bigger stars like Barry Manilow, Barry Manilow and myself. And who else would we have in it? We could have Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, Barry Manilow, myself, Bruce Springsteen, and we'll have Tom Jones in it as well. Then because he can be the old bastard, you know, and that will make me look much younger than I really am. I like the idea of that. So we'll have Barry Manilow, Bruce Springsteen. So we, so we got a bit of bit of real. Real nice music from Barry Manilow. Bit of nice rock from Bruce Springsteen. Um, Tom Jones, the old crooner. And me, the karaoke singer. Incidentally, I've started doing a new karaoke song, Mr. Blue Sky. Love that one from ELO. Sun is shining in the sky. There ain't no clouds above. Da, 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 da. Mr. Blue Sky. We've been waiting here for you. Oh, Mr. Blue Sky. But yeah, boy band then. What should it be called? Your suggestions, please. On email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Do you think we should just do covers? Or, or should we do original songs? Because Barry could write all the songs, couldn't he? Because he does write all the songs and makes the hell world sing. I write the songs of love and special... Th anyway, back to this story. You're di we're digressing this morning. We are digressing. Um, uh, yes, they were... Uh, ha uh, the comedian harmonists were the first sensational boy bands, six talented young men who came together in 1920s Germany and took the world by storm with their signature blend of sophisticated close harmonies and uproarious stage antics. Oh, now, I could be up for some uproarious stage antics. Well, no, quite frankly, I don't see myself throwing myself across stages and things like that. You know, sometimes I see some of the boys um, in... Uh, Belushi is where I work and they're mucking about a bit and one of them falls off a, a chair and these chairs are quite high you know when I push each other one and they fall onto the floor and they just get up you know no damage I don't think that would happen to me now I'd fall down the floor and that's it I'd be down down and out <laughs> we've lose the flexibility as we get older don't we we do a bit I'm afraid um the Comedian Harmonists, that's the boy band, uh, sold millions of records, starred in a dozen films and packed the houses of the most prestigious concert halls around the globe until the world they knew, uh, the world they knew changed forever. And so, so this is Harmony, uh, which has been written by Barry Manon and Bruce, what does he say, Bruce? Uh, Bruce, I don't know who Bruce is. Someone let me know. Who, who is Bruce? Oh, Wendy's commenting, just a minute. Ah, Bruce, oh. I've lost a... Where's, a, where's that message gone? There we are. Bruce um, Sussman. Is it Suss? S-U-S-S-M-A-N. Sussman is a long-time friend going back to their teens, I think. He wrote Copa the song. What? Copa Cabana? At the... Oh, I can't do that without maracas. Got to have maracas and palm trees for that one. Uh, he wrote Copa the song and the musical with Barry, and Jack Feldman, uh, as well as other numerous huge hits. Ah, oh, so that's Bruce, it's his friend. I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that. Marge is with us live this morning. Good morning, Marge, in Oklahoma. And she noticed my earbud fell out. Yes, it did. I thought I would... I would I, did, you see, did you see that much? I didn't even comment on it. I carried on like I was a professional newsreader. You know, you see when something happens to a news... Well, certainly here in the UK. I bet in the States they'd make a big thing out of it, wouldn't they? 
it'd be a big thing. We had um, uh, uh, a, a wonderful newsreader. She doesn't read the news anymore. I think she does some other programmes now, though. Angela Rippon. <clears throat> And once, and she was one of the, one of the, if not the, was she the first? Oh, I think she might have been the first woman newsreader in this country. Now we have loads on, you know. And uh, one day she was reading the news and she had these massive earrings on and one fell off. Well, it was on the front bloody pages of the paper. I'm going back here, I think, to the early 80s, possibly late 70s, early 80s, around that period. And Angela Rippens, one of her rings, or her earrings, fell off. No, nothing special, a little bit of a clang. And there were great big front pages, I still always remember it. Front page, Angie drops a clanger. And crap like that. You, you, you have to wonder about the British press sometimes. You know, millions of people starving across the world, wars going on all over the place. And that was what made the front page on some, not all, but a lot of the newspapers. Anyone remember that? Poor old Angela Rippon, her, her little earring dropping off. And she didn't flinch. She didn't bat an eyelid. On another occasion, and it might have been her, I'm not quite sure who it was. But on another occasion, um... Someone was doing uh, the news, and there was, they were reading it to camera, exactly as I'm doing now, except I'm not reading the news. I can do news if you want me to. Do you want me to do news? No, it's, no, it's not. No, we don't, we don't do news, do we? No, we don't do news. It's, it, it's just too depressing. My best mate, Ron, always says I should do more hard-hitting news stories that people can talk about. But you can do that, you know. This, this, this show is a friend. It's a friend at the other end. If you see what I mean. Which end? Oh, don't be rude. This is not a rude programme, you know that. Anyway, so <clears throat> another news bulletin would be in room, and suddenly there was this bang, and you could hear bits of glass falling down, where obviously one of the studio lights had gone bang. And again, the newsreader didn't even flinch, he just carried on. I think it was a hymn. Might have been a hymn. Which one, though? Um, I don't think it was Richard Baker. Might have been Kenneth Kendall. I don't know. Newsreaders in the UK. Yeah. Could I read the news? No. I, I'd like to think I could, but I'm not very good for foreign words. You know, like a foreign name or something like President Mugabe. Now, I can just about, I can get that one out. Who apparently, I don't know if he's a regular viewer of this show. President Mugabe, does he, does he watch his show? I don't think he likes the UK, President Mugabe, because he thinks the entire country is run by homosexuals. I mean, I wouldn't have any of that, dear. I'm sorry, there's far too much campness in this room alone for it to go all over the country. He does. President Mugabe was seen once who said the whole of the UK is run by gays. <laughs> the man's on drugs, dear, I'm telling you that now. Drugs, drugs, dear. It's amazing what you can do with three aspirins and a bottle of Coca-Cola, it really is. Anyway, so that's it. So, uh, good news for Barry Manilow fans, incidentally. Uh, those of you that watch the show, if you're new today, welcome along. Welcome along. I do have a Barry Manilow calendar on my wall behind me. And every month, a new picture of Barry comes up. In fact, you know, sometimes I turn the picture and I think, that's a nice picture. I hope the month goes quickly so that I can look at another picture of him. Good idea, really? Perhaps, perhaps. Now, um, yes, so I'm going to the hospital uh, today about my feet. I've got a 2.30 appointment. And um, uh, I, I generally leave, I always leave places too early. Um, just in case, you know, I get stuck in traffic or something like that. My best mate, Ron, he thinks I'm a nutter. Because I always leave too early. Sometimes if he might take me to a hospital or something like that, um, to have something looked at or done, then he, say the appointment's 2.30, he will arrive here at 1.30, right? And I would say, you're too late, you're too late. He said, no, I'm not. And he, oh, I hate his driving. Oh, God, I hate his driving. He's one of those that cuts across from the fast lane to the slow lane at the last moment, you know. On the other hand, I tend to do it too early, you know. Three miles to go, I'm on the inside. Oh, I drive on the inside lane most of the time. I only do about 60 mile an hour on the motorway. We don't want to get stopped or anything like that, thank you very much. Oh, I got stopped on Wednesday night. Yes, I got stopped on Wednesday night. I'd come out of where I was working, and that's the first time in, poor oh, blimey, 15 years? 
I got stopped. I, I did a U-turn outside the place I work on Wednesday night, Belushi's in Borough High Street. And um, I was driving driving back, and, I, I, you know, I, I didn't put the lights on immediately. I took off, so to speak. So as I turned around, and I lined up, and then turned the lights on. And I, and I was driving. I'm not really taking... I saw this van behind me. I didn't take much notice of it. Anyway, so I'm poodling along, as I usually do, and I don't break the speed limit anywhere, really. So that's not a problem. And I've come round this roundabout, Elephant and Castle, and suddenly these lights are flashing at me. I thought, oh, I've pulled... But no, sadly not, it was a police car. So I pulled over on this double red line. I thought, oh no, he's not going to stop me on a double red line. I should get another double red line ticket. I've had one of those recently and all. It's all going terribly wrong here, you know. Terribly wrong. No one cares. Nobody cares. You don't care, do you? Nobody cares. So, policeman's got a... Good evening, sir. Hello. Oh... Um, you probably want to know why we stopped you. Um, you came out of the pub and turned round rather quickly and you didn't put your lights on quickly enough. I said, oh, right, OK. I said, well, yeah, you saw me come out of harbour. You probably want to do a breathalyzer. He said, no, not really, sir. Um, can I just ask um, if you've had a drink tonight? I said, no, I don't drink. OK, so that's fair enough. He said, we won't need to do a breathalyzer. Because he could see straight away, you know. You know when someone's drunk. Uh, uh, come out of the pub. I, I don't have a drink. I don't know. Have you ever seen them in pubs? Swearing. Swearing that they're not drunk. You, see, you have seen them, haven't you? No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not drunk. I'm, I'm not drunk. I'm not drunk. And then I chuck up in front of her. Oh, my God. I was placed last night. I worked last night somewhere. And they were sick on the floor. Oh, I'm sorry if you're having your breakfast or dinner or lunch. Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this person I knew came up to me, all right, and he went back to his house. said, oh, careful, mind you, there's something on the floor. He said, what? I said, S-I-C-K. I've said S-I-C-K so that those, those people eating aren't going to be put off their food. S-I-C-K on the floor. And he said, where? And he's looking around. I said, no, no, cold. Cut, no, cold. Cut, warm, warm, warm. And he's come around. Warm, warm, warm no, cold. Cut, warm, hot, hot. And he went, ah! And he went, there, there it is. <laughs> anyway, back to the Blushes story. So, um... Uh, he said, sir, can I ask you, sir, when is the last time you had a drink? Was it yesterday? I said, no, I don't drink at all. He said, well, when's the last time you had a drink then? I said, about 25 years ago. He said, oh, well, why is that? I said, don't like it. Don't like the taste. It's horrible. You know, all wine, all wine I have ever tried tastes like vinegar to me. I don't know if there's something wrong with my taste buds. Tastes like bloody vinegar. Champagne hasn't got a particularly nice taste. I will, might have a glass if I'm flying business class to Australia or somewhere like that. I might have a free glass of champagne, or maybe if I'm one of those after I've done I've done afternoon tea a couple of times in London as well. Yeah, it was someone's birthday. I've taken them out there to to um uh, uh, to London at uh, uh, Fortnum and Masons and had afternoon tea in there. I've had a glass of well, and of course because I don't drink, you see. If I do, well, so that was quite a little bit of a lie. I haven't drunk for 20 years. I've had the very, when I say a very occasional glass of champagne, we're talking about one glass every three years or so. That's it. That is, <laughs> that is the extent. I'm practically an alcoholic. I am practically an alcoholic, boys and girls. One drink every four years. I mean, it's all downhill now, isn't it? I might have to book myself into one of those clinics, you know. To get help with this problem that I've got. It, it, it's a terrible thing. I mean, we're going to Italy. Me and my best mate are going to Italy. To Rome. Um, in a couple of months' time. And we're flying in the posh seats. You know, the posh seats. And I think I might have a glass of champagne. He won't be able to handle me. I tell you. Because I become quite happy. Happy. I do become happy. Anyway. Back to the policeman. Stop digressing. Stop digressing. Um... And I said, no, I really don't like the taste. All wine tastes to me like, 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 uh, like, uh, like vinegar. Uh, beer's got a horrible taste. Bitter is vile. Oh, it's vile. And Guinness. Oh, God. I've seen young people drinking Guinness. It's the most vile drink ever. 
Alco Pops, I used to, many years ago, have those. Um, at the time I was drinking them, uh, I think the most popular one was Hooch. Do you remember Hooch? Can you still get that? Hooch. Lemon-flavoured Hooch. I believe that was the very first one. Lemon-flavoured Hooch. And they bought out Peach Hooch. But after a while, even that to me, it just tasted so sweet and sickly. Now, ever so sweet. You might, you might as well put put a whole packet of sugar in a glass of water and drink that with a little bit of orange juice in it. Oh, it's horrible. And um, I don't know. It, after I had a, a few of those, my teeth used to feel like all the all the enamel had been completely stripped off them. So no, I don't drink. Don't drink at all. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, sir. Well, um, we'll just run a couple of checks on your car, and uh, then you can be off. Can I have your name and address? So I gave him that. Yes, Chris Redden. I thought when I said Chris Redden, I thought I thought he might say, "No, not the Chris Redden from United Kingdom Talk," but he didn't. Unfortunately, he didn't actually. I was most disappointed not to be recognised. You know, some of my. Um, uh, radio friends, I'm sure, would would be recognised, but I wasn't. Didn't ask for autograph or. Oh, do, do you mind if I take a photograph of you with myself? You know, you got the camera, turned it round, and no, nothing like that at all. No. Uh, maybe it just never happened. You know, not like when Barry Manilow comes out of the back door and he's got the big dark sunglasses on. I mean, I got I haven't got sunglasses with me. I have got like reading glasses with me today. People say I look quite nice with the glasses. I don't know. Does that suit me or not? Glasses? I'll tell you what, it's a bloody lot easier to read what, I'm, what I've got written down here when I've got these on. <laughs> I've got a book, for, I've got a book, a, a eye test soon. Yes, I must do an eye test. Um, not but Mainly because I've got a voucher through the post from Sex Spec Savers. Yeah, five pounds for an eye test. So I'm going to go and have one of those soon for five pounds. Trouble is, I keep getting these vouchers. And you get, maybe that happens twice a year, Matt. And I let them run out. And if, oh, I'll leave it for the next one. Well, this has been going on for three years now. You know, get the voucher, put it to the side. Oh, I'll use that to do in a couple of weeks. And then I forget to use the blooming thing. Anyway, back to the story. So he checked up my name and address. And he says, OK, sir, um, be on your way. I said, all right, thanks very much, boys. Um, have a good evening. And off I went. And that was that, really. You know, first time I've been pulled over for about 15 years. I think they probably thought I'd come out drunk. That's what it is. They probably thought I'd had a couple of drinks over the top. And to be honest, I was surprised he didn't breathalyze me anyway. Um, although I haven't been breathalyzed for, oh, my God, 25 years or more. I thought they would do that automatically when they say, see me come out of the pub. Or maybe, maybe they would they be able to smell it, would they? Can you always smell if someone's been drinking or not? I don't know. Don't know, really. Anyway, so that's, that's, that's my little story there. Um, so off to the hospital later to get my feet seen to. I hope, I hope they can sort it out. Now, what else have we got today? Oh, it's Millie's birthday. I don't know if she's with us today, live. Uh, but good morning, Millie. Let's have a look. Is she? I don't know if she's with us live. No, I don't think she is. Millie, Millie, Millie. No, she's not with us live, but it doesn't matter because Millie does watch the show uh, at a later point. So we must say happy birthday to Millie for yesterday. Are you ready, boys and girls? Here we go. Oh, hang on. I need my little headphone for this because I can't hear the bloody music. One minute. My little ear earbud, which Marge has noticed my earbud fell out. Yes, but it didn't break. Don't worry, Marge. I've got carpet in here, my darling. Hang on a minute. I've got carpet in here, so nothing nothing really breaks when I drop it on the floor. Here we go. Millie's birthday. <coughs> Ready? Sing along with me, boys and girls. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Millie, happy birthday to you. Ah! Hey, uh, Millie, happy birthday, my darling. I'm sorry if it's a day late, but this is the closest show to your birthday. Um, so happy birthday. Anyone buy you anything nice? What did you get? We want to know, Millie, what you got for your birthday. Do let us know on the email, OK? Chris at uh, 
www.chrisatunitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at United Kingdom Talk. .co.uk. A couple of messages coming in. Uh, first of all, from my niece-in-law, Stacy, who has two wonderful children now. There is Evie, t- the toddler, who's just over a year old. There is Harry, the baby, who is just a couple of months old. Two of them. And I have a feeling it's not going to stop there. I get this feeling there's going to be a very big family. I have a feeling of that. Which is bad news for me because it cost me a fortune at bloody well Christmas time. It really will. Don't worry, Stacey, about me. I'll buy gifts and won't eat myself. That's what sort of person I am, lovey. It is. Stacey says, you're looking radiant this morning, dear. New moisturiser? I beg your pardon, no. Oh, I am shining, aren't I? No, I don't. I really don't use moisturiser or anything like that. Not like some of these other puffs. Oh, my God. You want to see what Roddy... Oh, sh- he's, he's asked me not to say that. So I really can't. But he does put loads and loads of stuff on his face in the morning. Loads of stuff on his face in the morning. He does. And he's, <laughs> I told you he's had fillers, haven't I? Because apparently there's two lines that go from your nose to your mouth. He's had fillers there. Injected things into his face. Oh, no, I don't think so. I couldn't be having anything injected into my face. It's not natural, is it? It's not right to have all this stuff. Anyway, Stacy says, Evie is loving watching. She hasn't moved yet. Good morning, Evie the baby. I don't, I don't have any, any children's songs. I suppose I could sing you a, um, a little, little nursery rhyme. I wonder if I could find a little nursery rhyme to, to, to sing to you. Um, <clears throat> let's have a look. <laughs> we got any nursery rhymes up here somewhere? Just a second, boys and girls. I'll have a look for you. Thank you. Let's try that one there. I like to sing it with music. I don't like, like, a cappella singing. Do you know what I mean? I like, uh, I like uh, singing with music and orchestras and things like that. Uh, is that me there? Let's see if is that me. I always get... I can never remember password. Oh, that's it. Yep, that's it. Let's have a quick look there. Evie, let's do... I wonder if that one's in the system. One minute. No, that's not there. Nursery rhymes. Oh, well. No, twi- oh, I know. Oh, I know what's in there. I know what's in there. Twinkle, twinkle, little star! Oh, no, it's not. Maybe it's on the other one. One minute, one minute. I'll be with you in a second. We've got to do these emails. I've only, I'm only here for an hour today. We've already done half. Uh, lucky... F- let, that's it. I'm sure it's here. I do twinkle, twinkle, little star. I like that one. Twinkle. One moment, please. One moment, please. Here it is, here it is, here we go. Especially for Evie. <clears throat> twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. What's another verse? When the blazing sun is gone, when he nothing shines upon, then you show your little light. Twinkle, twinkle, all the night. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Oh, another verse. Hang on a minute. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high Like a diamond in the sky Twinkle, twinkle, little star How I wonder what you are Alright? <laughs> Especially for Evie, 
my little uh, uh, my my great niece this morning, who's watching this morning, in between watching bananas in pajamas or something wonderful like that. Oh, I remember those wonderful children's programs, um, banana splits and all that business. Do you remember all that? Fantastic programmes. Uh, some more messages coming then. Uh, once again, good morning to Marge, who says, I'm about five minutes behind you. Oh, I'm, I'm quite touched by that little song. It's brought a tear to my eye. Can you see the tear in my eye? I know you're probably crying as well. Crying because it was so blooming bad singing, wasn't it? Le 11 o'clock already. Hear the times. The clock speaks. Uh, Marge says, I'm about five minutes behind you, I think, but I'm commenting on the drinks. Tab, T-A-B, was the most horrible drink I have ever drank, and it was not alcoholic. Did they have Tab in the UK? I think they did, Marge. I'm pretty sure at some point we had Tab in the UK, although I don't actually remember, jo I don't remember, um, having that either, to be honest, Tab. Anyone ever have that drink, Tab? Do let us know. Uh, once again, if you're watching on Friday the 21st of June 2013 and it's just gone 11 o'clock, then you are with us live and you can join in live. You can speak to me live on the show today uh, by either Skype. My Skype username is all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. OK, or you can phone in. Local London number 020 8133 020 is my phone number. Once again, the Skype username is all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Or indeed, uh, you can send an email if you're watching the recording or watching live. Uh, the email address is chris at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk chris at united kingdom talk dot co uh, dot uk all right now let's uh, just do an email here because uh, poor old uh, james sent this in last week <clears throat> and i think he's added it as well uh, is that he's added to it as well because um uh, uh, we this got lost somewhere last week so let's read this from james uh, who's uh, who's uh, just outside london who says hi chris you were talking about your insur uh, about insurance and people suing. Yes, uh, we're talking about this um, whole whiplash thing and all that business. Um, apparently, Britain is the capital of the world of people suing for whiplash. Now, if you are someone who's had whiplash and you have a lot of pain, my heart goes out to you. But they're saying that virtually most of the whiplash people claiming there's nothing wrong with them and you see what happens is that you'll have an accident and then your phone will start ringing from various companies all over the place asking you if you've had whiplash and you say no uh, i've had it myself i've had this myself a couple of years ago when someone hit the back of my car and after that the phone didn't stop ringing people telling you that you can claim money for whiplash. Oh, I haven't got whiplash. Are you sure? Do you want to go and get it checked out? It doesn't cost anything to have it checked out, sir. Um, uh, because there's a four-figure sum waiting for you and all this old crap. No, I don't want to lie. Thank you. I don't want to lie. And they go, are you sure? They go on and on. They want you to claim for this whiplash. Because, of course, they get money for it themselves. They get a bit of the money. That, that's the only reason for it. And they push and they push and they push. I tell them to piss off in the end because it, it just gets on my nerves. Go away. There's nothing wrong with me. I, I'm afraid to say I, I hope. I hope that I'm not in the minority. And I hope there are other people that would say, no, I don't have whiplash. I mean, quite honestly, it would scare the life out of me. What if I claim for whiplash because they kept pushing and pushing, and then I got caught for actually not having anything wrong with me? What happens then? You'd be in trouble then, wouldn't you? Fraud. Yeah, you'd be done for fraud then. So, no, thank you. I'd rather play safe and tell them the truth. No, I don't have anything wrong with me. There's no bruises, there's no cuts, nothing. Someone hit me at the back, the car moved slightly forward, and and it needed a new bumper on the back. That's it. Because today's bumpers are the crap, aren't they? They're just bits of plastic, really. Waste of time having them on the car, to be honest. 
You know, when we used to have these lovely chrome bumpers, they would get damaged, and then someone would come and knock out the, 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 the damage, wouldn't they? And perhaps put a bit of filler in it, and it would be as good as new. Now they have to replace the whole thing at several hundred pounds. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? Making more and more money out of us miserable motorists. Anyway, so that's what we're talking about here. James says, Hi Chris, you were talking about insurance and suing. I just see it as a money-making racket now. Some insurance is good for bits or expensive items, but for some items, it's not the pa worth the paper it's written on. Uh, the insurance is more than the item. Well, I don't know about that. No, I think you're wrong there, James. You, you can't be paying more in insurance than the item is actually worth. What examples have you got for that? You can't say that and not give examples. So are you saying that I could buy, like, a car for £20,000 and the insurance would be £30,000? It, no, it wouldn't happen, James. You're wrong there, mate. Can't happen. Can't happen. You say, you say there that the insurance is more than the item. No, it can't happen. As for suing, it has its place for serious problems. People, but claiming for tripping up on pavement and coming away from it unhurt, so to speak, that is wrong. Um, I, th I think there's certainly a case for... for the emphasis to be on the person being a little bit more aware. You get cases... I'm, I'm just trying to think of an incident now of of people who have slipped over on something or something. Well, why the bloody hell didn't you just look where you were going? I, I, that's what I think a lot of the time. When you see a lot of these accidents and things, and you think to yourself, well, didn't you look where you were going? It's an accident. Why should you be allowed to sue for loads of money? And it's all it is, money, 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 grabbing bastards all the time. If <clears throat> you have an accident in a car because someone was dangerous driving and they've got absolutely sue them absolutely yes but there's many many instances burglars burglars who break into people's houses and step on a fork in the garden and knock themselves out should they be allowed to sue you absolutely not shouldn't be in the bloody garden so I've got to think. I've got to think to myself, right? Oh, I must tidy up the garden in case a burglar comes in there later on. I don't think so. And yet it does happen. We've heard stories over the years of people breaking into houses, doing themselves some sort of damage, I don't know, whatever on, perhaps on the very glass that they've broken, and then suing the owner for not looking after the property properly. No, it's, it's, it's so wrong. It's absolutely wrong. We had a case a few years back, a farmer, and he was constantly being broken into. Um, here in the UK, you are not allowed to have a gun unless you have a special license. I don't know how easy it is to get a license. I don't have a gun. Um, uh, I don't know if you have to pass tests or anything like that, but nevertheless, you need some sort of license to legally own a gun, right? So most of us, virtually all of us, haven't got guns, OK? But this farmer did have a gun. He was constantly broken into in his home and was afraid. And then one day, he decided to wait. <clears throat> and he waited somewhere with his gun. And sure enough, the burglars turned up and he shot one of them can't remember what happened. I think the person who got shot might have died. can't remember. He went to prison for that. Is that right? I don't think he should have gone to prison. They shouldn't have broken into his house. It's as simple as that. Why did this farmer get thrown in prison for trying to protect his own pro- He was scared. And I, I think, you know, and, 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 and it's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. So, but that's, that's a different subject, isn't it? Um, you were talking about the karaoke you do. 
Do you still broadcast that on the internet? Um, occasionally, yes, but I never know when I'm going to do it. I just do it sort of ad hoc, you know, if I sort of think, oh, I'll put, I'll put the karaoke on tonight and do it like that. That's how I do it. Simon Cowell was egged when he was judging on Britain's Got Talent. Yes, I saw that. It was, funny. It was very funny. I saw it on the news and wondered what was going on and why the woman did what she did. It's a shame to see it happening in a way. And do you still do the quiz nights too? Yes, I still do quiz nights. Um, I do a quiz night at the Mayflower Public House in Rotherhive on Tuesday nights at 8.30pm, OK? Quiz night is Tuesday at uh, the Mayflower in Rotherhive at 8.30pm. Uh, yeah, I did see Simon Cowell getting egged on that show. I thought it was quite funny. You know. I think, I think Simon Cowell entertains, brings entertainment to a lot of people. I don't always agree with the way some of the shows are made and all that business. But generally, yeah, I mean, he's, he's all right, isn't he? Telemarketing calls. There are many ways to try and stop them. Uh, BT do anonymous call rejection and a list that you can be added to to try and stop telesales uh, calling. Yes, uh, anyone can join it. It's called Telephone Preference Service. Yes, I've got that. It doesn't stop all the calls. It stops most of them. But I don't answer the phone anymore. Uh, th that's the truth, James. If I don't recognise a number, I no longer answer the phone. I've turned off my... I have no answer phones... I turned off the answer phone in the living room. I turned off the answer phone on the mobile phone. No one can contact me anymore unless I know the number. No company can talk to me because I just ignore it. That's it. And I'm a lot happier doing that. A lot, lot happier like that. Don't have to answer the phone. I have a quick look. Oh, no, don't know that number. Just put it to the side. Doesn't go to answer phone, they call up again. There is one company that's been calling me for months, months. They have. I don't know who they are. Don't bother me. Something to do with something to do with electricity, I think. Electricity and gas. No, it's not the bill collectors. I pay my bills, I'll have you know, thank you very much. I have very low bills because of my solar panels. But this, this company's been going on for months and months, this company's been trying to call me, not answering them. They think, I, I don't know how it works. Do they actually think if they keep doing it, someone will eventually answer? It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Don't need to change your number or anything. Just don't answer the phones and numbers you don't know. Ignore withheld and blocked calls and turn your answer phones off. Problem solved. End of story. End of story. Um... <clears throat> As for silent calls, it's probably a computer-generated call. Yes, I used to have those as well, but not anymore, because I don't answer the phone. That's it. Nice to hear Millie from Minnesota again the other week. Uh, yes, she was on last week, wasn't she? And what she was saying about being treated differently by some people because she's disabled, it happens here a bit in the UK too. I don't know why people do it. It can be very frustrating. I think it's just ignorance. Another problem I see is people walk around you like you don't exist in London. I guess it's been going on a long time. What, you mean people in uh, uh, wheelchairs and things like that? Um, walking around? Yeah, I, I suppose. I, I don't know. I haven't really noticed it that much. I know sometimes uh, if I see someone at, uh, at the supermarket, Waitrose, um, I'll go and help them if they're in the disabled bay or something. Do you need any help? No, I'm okay. You know, normally, nine times out of ten, they say no. So that's it. You know. It was one, one once, and I said, oh, do you want any help? No, I don't. Oh, oh, right, okay, fine. Thank you. Sorry. So I think sometimes um, disabled people are actually offended by um, the fact that you want you you've offered to help i don't know why you know, it's a bit like holding the door open for some people and they just swish a lot of the ladies just swish through not the older ones i have to say a lot of the young young ladies they just swish through the door as if as if nothing's happened no thank you or anything like that and i find that incredibly rude incredibly rude james says i hope this email doesn't get lost do you get emails through microsoft outlook program um, what is this program? I don't know what it is. Windows Mail is the program. Is it Windows Mail? Is it Outlook? I don't know. Windows Mail is the one that I use. Okay? Windows Mail. 
Right, that's that's my email. I think there is a tick box that you have to tick or untick to keep the mails on your server until you wipe the email manually. Otherwise, the email is downloaded or wiped from the server. I found it rather strange how Outlook works. I could even do it wrong myself from James. No, actually, James, after the show last week, I thought I need to have a look at this, what's going on here. And what had happened, on the right-hand side of Windows Mail is a little box, and it says, Show All Messages hide red messages, hide red or ignored messages. And somehow I changed it to hide red messages. So your email was actually there, I just couldn't see it. And then after the show, oh, I wonder what happens if I do this. So I click that and show all messages, and immediately it burst onto the screen in a puff of smoke. And all could be seen again. So thanks for sending that in again, James. Boy, very nice of you to do that. Uh, do send in a, a few emails. We're a bit lacking in emails recently, boys and girls. Those of you who are watching the recording. My email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. It's always a pleasure um, to hear from you and what you're up to and give us something to talk about as well, OK? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Um... We might even make the show a little bit longer. Today, we're only doing an hour today because I've got to go down to the hospital and get my feet sorted, or at least looked at. I hope they will be sorted. Um, but uh, we have been doing sort of hour and three-quarter shows. I'm quite prepared for that to go on even further from next week. And we'll be able to do that from next week because I've ordered a card for my recording equipment, right? I was restricted by that. It got to 1.45 and the card was full up. Well, I've ordered it. Well, it's actually the second time I've ordered card. I've had a couple of experiences this week with Amazon. Good experiences. Very, very good experiences with Amazon. First of all, a, um, a, uh, a computer that I bought in September, the video socket has become loose. Now, I use this computer uh, for my karaoke nights, and I plugged in, everything was plugged in, and no video on, on the screens around the, around the venue. OK, so the so computer was working. There was no video coming anywhere. And I thought, oh, that's that socket. Because I'd already noticed it had started becoming loose. So it, it, it's broke. Um, emailed Amazon. It ele check this out, right? Emailed Amazon at 11 o'clock on Wednesday night. Went to bed, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. When I got up at 9 o'clock, they had already replied, apologising for the problem and offering a full refund as I couldn't... Um, as, I, as they didn't have a replacement. That is what you call good service. Or I could contact Toshiba for a repair. Well, actually, I rang up Toshiba, told them the situation, and they said, what did the retailer say? I said, well, they've offered me a full refund or to contact you. He said, if I were you, sir, take the refund and buy a new computer because we will repair it. He said, he said, which, which should be OK. But if, I were, if, if it were me, I'd take the money and buy another computer. So that's what I've done. It's actually downstairs now waiting for, what's the company called? Yodel to pick it up. Yodel, 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 So they're coming to pick it up and, and then, then uh, I'll get a refund. And I'm going to be ordering one from John Lewis. I've seen one that I like. And I'm going to try HP this time. I never bought a HP laptop. Because I was out yesterday looking, I thought I was going to buy another one tomorrow, you know, because you, I've got a spare one. I always carry a spare one, so I'm able to continue to do my work. That doesn't stop. Always very, very important to carry a spare laptop. Although this is the first time ever I've had a laptop go wrong, and I've had a few now, because I tend to change them every couple of years, uh, because they get used every night. This is the first laptop ever that's gone wrong on me. It's not bad, is it? It was a Toshiba. I've had two Toshibas before, but I went out yesterday to have a look around. I thought I'd buy one today. And I looked again, I found the same model. I thought, well, I'll buy the same model. That's the easiest thing to do. Um, but, oh, that computer's gone into overdrive down there. It's, it's suddenly sped up. The, the fan on the computer suddenly went mad then. I wonder what was going on there. Um, yes, and I looked at the Toshiba ones, and I, I thought, oh, well, I'll have a look at the socket. And they're all a little bit, you know, shall we say flimsy? You know, you could, you could tap, put your thumb on it and, mo and wiggle it, and it would move. And I looked at the HP ones, and they didn't move. Because 
on the old Toshiba that I've got, you used to put your video lead in and put two screws would do up and it would firmly hold that there. So what I did with the old one years ago, I bought like a, an adapter socket. So I screwed it directly onto the socket that come out of the computer. So that was permanent there. So that would save the socket from moving at all. And then it would just plug things into this extension thing, you see. And, and it was fine. But I found, I've looked around at the Toshiba ones and they've not got the screw thing. And they look a bit flimsy, so I'm not going to buy another Toshiba. The HP ones looked a little bit more sturdy, so I'm going to probably order one off um off um uh, john lewis i've saw saw one on john lewis which is at the price that i'm willing to pay you know you don't need to spend a fortune on people go out and spend nine thousand pounds nine hundred thousand pounds one half that on a computer you don't need that you really don't need that unless you're into some serious gaming or something like that maximum on a computer for 450 this one's under 400 pound that i'm buying and that does all my music and everything brilliant a second experience with Amazon. So I'd already ordered a card for my recording video camera. OK. And um, the card in it was eight gig. And I looked. Is that a knock on the door? No. I looked up. It might be. Can you just hang on a second? Is that a knock? Because it, it might be the man coming to collect the computer. Oh, no. So it's the postman. It's the postman. I was very excited. I thought there was going to be another delivery, but no, it's just just some boring old letters. Um, yes. So I looked up on the internet, and you can get sixty-four gig cards. Well, I thought I can do a ten-hour show on one of those, dear. So I've ordered one of those. It arrived yesterday. Funnily enough, on the same day that I'd sent, uh, I was going to send back the um, uh, laptop. It's all wrapped up down there, waiting for Yodel to come and collect it, and um, plugged it in. And it wouldn't work, and it won't initialise. I thought, like, what's gone wrong there? And I thought, oh, I wonder if there's a limit to the card I can put in it. So I typed in there maximum, and you can only put a 16 gig card in. So, which is double what's in there now. So, oh, no. So, again, I emailed Amazon. Within 10 minutes, an email came back. No problem at all. Just send it back. We'll give you a full refund. And that was that. So, I'm really very, very impressed with Amazon. When I had the problem with the computer first, I thought, oh, this is going to be such asshole sending stuff back through the post. I really thought it was going to be all asshole. And they reply within 48 hours and you've got to do this. Not at all. They replied within just a couple of hours, Amazon. And within 20 minutes on the other occasion, they send you a label so you don't have to pay the postage. They give you specific instructions on what to do. And that's it. Absolutely marvellous. So brilliant, brilliant service from Amazon. And I know Marge in Oklahoma also has had some really good uh, service with Amazon when she's bought stuff from them from the past as well. Um, she sends in a little message here. Um, she says, oh, I don't think it's five minutes um, that I'm behind. Your clock just chimed 11 o'clock and it's 5.02. Oh, so you're only two minutes behind, are you? You're two minutes behind there when you get the show to sort of I broadcast it because it has to go through loads of wires and all over the world and all that, I guess. Um, Marge says, I may have to go back to sleep. I've got a, a long day at work today. I think the problem with your feet is circulation or perhaps in your back and not in your feet. My mother had a problem with her feet and she was in an accident and it hurt her back. Well, I hope not. I don't, I don't ever get back ache or anything like that, Marge, though. I don't get how a motorcycle insurance is only $5 every six months. Like, if I hit someone, I'm not going to do much damage or what? Oh, really? I don't know about that, Marge. Um, oh, she's on the phone now. Good morning, Marge. Oh, hang on, I haven't got my earphone in. I wonder why it was so quiet. <laughs> Good morning, Marge. Good morning. All right. Yeah, you hear me? I've just read out your little message there. Oh, okay. Just read out your message about your um, uh, motorbike insurance. Is that all you have to pay? Five dollars a month? Yeah, that is that has wow. flipped me out. <laughs> I couldn't believe I said, I guess they think if I hit it's, somebody, it's, I'm not going to do much damage. No, I mean, it, it's very expensive here. Any sort of insurance is really expensive here, Marge. Well, I think it's because, well, I just get liability. 
Yeah. I don't yeah. if they allow you that, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I wow. think, you know, boys, young men, they, they always have to pay a lot more. Oh, yeah. Well, they, they do take risks, you know. I mean, oh, my, my nephew's um, okay now. They took the plaster off on that because he had a little 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 minor yeah. motorbike so they took the plaster off his um his ankle and his leg on monday and his mm. um he start, just started work actually he started work oh. experience yes he's um working in like a car body workplace and um uh, yeah yes i spoke to him last night he rubbed down the engine the engine what, what's the thing where you put the engine in a car what's that called that the hole you know what i mean don't you Oh yeah, you stab an the engine. engine bay? <laughs> Is it the engine bay? Um, huh. that's a funny thing. I I don't know what this called. <laughs> yeah, put, the hole where you put the engine into. I think it's the engine bay. You had to rub yeah. down that yesterday for uh, a new car, and he, he and the other day he had to rub down some wheels, uh, someone's posh wheels, you know, for for posh yeah. car. Like I clothes. used to acidize them. You know those chrome wheels. Oh yeah. I used to when I detailed cars at. Uh, Ford dealership. Yeah, I did all that, so uh, it's good experience. I mean, it's hard work, some of that, but oh yeah, you know. I think yeah. I said, have you got masks and all that? He says, yeah, they give us masks and oh yeah, rubber te- gloves. Yeah, if you're using yeah. acid or anything like that, you yeah. gotta make sure you yeah. get all the, the only equipment. Thing is, gloves and masks and all this protective clothing in the summer that can't be much fun wearing all that stuff. Oh, you must yeah. be ever so hot with that stuff on, dear. Yeah. I've been in chemicals for 35, 40 years now, and and I think that's where some of my health problems are. <laughs> Breathing's paint, you know, and all those yeah. chemicals from cleaning and buffing and polishing and housekeeping. and <laughs> but, but <laughs> I'm where, just in chemical but, abuse, I think. <laughs> yeah, but where, where you live is very open in Oklahoma, isn't it? It's very open where you live and, and nice. Do you know what I mean? Well, we do get... Oh, it's nice sometimes, but where I live, I got a lot of allergies because my pasture here has, um, you know, a lot of uh, weeds and love grass. It's not always that nice. I mean, we yeah. <laughs> we get dust storms, and if really? we don't get a lot of rain, we had a drought for two years. Oh god! And so it's been horrible as far as you know yeah, uh, yeah, the yeah. weather and stuff. But now we're just getting rain and rain and rain and tornadoes. And so <laughs> much rain. Oh, Making no. up. Mother Nature is making up for the well, two years we, of we, drought. We saw you the know? tornadoes. Thing. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago, didn't we? We saw the yeah. tornadoes and what have you going on there. It hasn't. It's pretty well quietened down on mm. that aspect. Mm. But it, And we've just been getting rain, thank goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Lots yeah. of rain. <laughs> I mean, floods. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> It's like the, the the clouds have just opened up, you know. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, la- I laughed because I was reading the newspaper and and they had a a prayer vigil in Oklahoma City. I mean, this was interfaith, right. and they all got together to r- pray rain, you know, pray for rain. And then about a week later, we started getting these these floods. I said, "Hey, when you pray pray rain, you're supposed to, you know, not." <laughs> get secured away you know did, they, did I see some, <laughs> some, someone somewhere is dropping something into the clouds at the moment to make it rain or something in the states is that right oh, I haven't seen that seeding them I don't know if that, how I that think, works oh, I, don't, I don't know like the idea so, I think they wish muck around with nature like this all the time I think you know? yeah well I don't know we always muck with nature because we interact yeah. with nature we yes. all we always do it Yes, we're driving so. cars that's interfering yeah. with nature because yeah, we're yeah, putting yeah, all this yeah. pollution in it, you know. We can't live without interacting with nature. No, we can't. There's no way. <laughs> Must- so every, everything you do, you know, is, is, for, is reflecting on nature. Yeah. That's why we've got global warming because of all the cars and or they think or it could be the earth. You're, they think the earth now is actually <clears throat> doing it itself. You're nowhere, you near, you're nowhere near any water there, are you, Marge? Oh yeah, I got a oh, pond or lake. They're about no, no. I mean, feet I mean, a, a river or something or the sea. You're nowhere near anything like that, are you? Yeah, I've got a str- well, not a river, but a stream and a okay. pond, and okay. but not a a lake. About oh, let's see, ten, fifteen miles. We got Clear Creek Lake. Right. Yes. Yeah, there's water here. Uh huh. Okay. And finally, getting water. Like I said, after the drought. <laughs> So it's 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 pretty pretty and green now. I've got oh. grass to mow every week. I hate that part. <laughs> I thought it was going to rain yesterday or the day before. It's been really dark and over cloud, uh, overcast here, but no rain. They kept saying it was going to rain all day and nothing came. 
Yeah, well, my they water butts are nearly empty, Marge. They're nearly empty. Well, they try to predict the ra- weather in Oklahoma, and that's something you, it's very. Yeah. I hate to be a meteorologist, you know, because yes, yes. it is hard as heck. Yeah. They'll, well, like yesterday, they said it was going to rain. It got, it got up to 94 degrees Fahrenheit right. and about six, uh, 58% humidity. Wow. So yeah. it was horrible. I mean, you know, heat, I can take, but heat and humidity, <laughs> that's, a, that's horrible. So, it, it you know, like I said, they can't really predict it. They'll try to, and then all of a sudden they say, well, it's supposed to do this, and then it'll change. So they'll mm. they do the best they can, though. Mm-hmm. That'd be a hard job to have. Unless, my, unless you're my mother. Now, of course, like I said, she looks at the crows. <laughs> the crows. I mean, she listens to the crows. And, uh, they tell it, her the weather. Is her forecast fairly good from crows? She does good. Yeah. I, she'll say, yeah, she'll we, say we've, crows we've a, it's going to rain. We've yeah. got a couple She's of... Never, uh, way I tell is the, if the turtles cross the road. going If they cross the road going east to west, it's going to rain. If it's north to south, it's going to rain. We've got a couple of people here. And that works. I don't know. The animals somehow know. <laughs> We've got a couple of people here who, who do that. You know, they they yeah. work out the weather by flowers or, or, or animals or something like that. And they're, they're fairly good predictors, you know. It does yeah. seem to work. Well, I believe everything's interconnected. We're not separate from nature. That's no, my belief all, system. We are nature. I mean, we're part of the animal kingdom yeah. and everything, you know. That's my, that's my belief system. So if you ta- – because humans, they got their mind on everything. They don't really listen to nature. Their, their mind is on paying the bills and, yeah. you know, and yeah, work. That's, and that's and true. animals are it's more true. in tune because they don't do all that. They, no, they, they listen, you know. Marge, Tonight, I'm going to have to go now because I've got I've got to leave and, and stop in a minute, and I've just got two more emails to go through. So okay. just a short call today, I'm afraid. Yeah, my call's always short. I have to go. And get, your, <laughs> nah, I got to go back. Your to bed calls anyway. are not short. No, people people love your accent. You know that oh. they love listening to you. I know. I'm just kidding. I got to go back to sleep anyway. I got a long day today, work right. day. Well, sweet but dreams. I'll see you next week. I hope so. Try and ring in a bit earlier next week. We'll have a longer... Ch- well, no, it won't matter next week because well, we can go on for hours I, next week. Hours I, there. Hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, you almost put me to sleep singing t- uh, Twinkle, Twinkle. That You're going to put me to sleep, start singing them little songs. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting here... <sighs> That could be a, oh, that could oh. be that could be but a I whole new. Every time I'm going to have to be on, I always dream I'm trying to get to the show. I did it again. Well, that All, could be a whole new night, YouTube. Um, that could be a whole new YouTube um, channel. You know, Chris Reardon sings nursery rhymes. I was dreaming that I was watching the, the computer trying to wait. Oh, I got to be at Chris uh, again. <laughs> oh God, you, you're, you're interfering my dream world. I go can't on, go it. back to sleep. I'll see you later, Marge. Okay. Good, Hello, my darling. Have a good, good day. Thanks for calling. Bye bye. Oh, oh, there went my mic. <laughs> there we are, the lovely Marge in Oklahoma. Sorry, I have to cut us short today because I, I must get off shortly. Um, just a couple of emails. Good morning to Shania. Morning, Shania, who says uh, we've always had good experiences with Amazon. Lovely. Oh, it's a, I see a little picture of Shania. What a beautiful young lady you are. Beautiful lady. Uh, we have a HP laptop, and they are very good. So that's what I'm going to get, Shania. All right, a nice HP laptop. Sorry I haven't got time to talk to you today, darling. And finally, from Cyberton, it's funny you should mention uh, dreams there. Marge mentioned dreams there. Because we're going we're to talk about dreams today. Cyber John. Uh, was talking about dreams. Uh, uh, he also says, my knees are giving me jip. Is this what we have to put up with when we get to 40? Well, you 40 and me 50, you know... I'm ten years ahead of you, mate, and my feet are giving up. Uh, Weird dreams and feet, knee difficulties, bring on the pension. (laughs) Bring on the pension. No, thank you, I don't want to retire. I love what I do. Mind you, if I did retire from my night jobs, I'd just do some more of these, I think. Probably a daily show. That would send everyone to sleep, wouldn't it? A daily show of me chatting for like three hours a day. Could I do that? I don't know, probably. (laughs) <laughs> no, I, I I would sit here thinking, oh, I can't do this, I can't do it. And then I'd start it, and then it would go. No, I, I, I certainly, um, we can start doing longer shows from next week, if if you want that, you know. The thing is, once you get into the flow, not necessarily everyone will stay with us for the whole time it's here. 
You know, some people only stay for a few minutes at the beginning. Some people stay. I don't know how many people stay for the entire show. If you're one of them, let me know. Do you stay for the entire show? Let us know that on the email, please. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right, Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Um... And uh, Cyber John also says, Chris, do you turn off Desert Island Discs on Radio 4 every time they start saying that Sailing By tune? Oh, what's the Sailing By tune? Now, is that the, um... You don't mean Sailing By, um, Rod Stewart, do you? I don't know what the Sailing By tune is. He says, I can't stand it. And does anyone believe that ce the celebrity, when they say, oh, yes, I want to hear Rimsky Koskinov's third umbrella concerto? I don't. I think they have REM on their iPods and are trying to be posh. I, don't, I've ne I never listened to um, uh, Desert Island Disc. Who's the host of that one, though? Is it still Sue? Was it that newsreader used to do it? I think the newsreader used to do it. Um... Sue, I can't remember her name now. Can't remember. When someone chooses good music, they play about ten seconds of it. Is that right? I don't listen to Destin Island Discs at all, I'm afraid. Um, I do download a couple of podcasts. That's Steve Allen on LBC. I listen to him every morning. I actually record the... My, on my iPhone, I've got this little app now that will record whole radio shows. So um, I do listen to the whole show now. And uh, who's the other one? Dr. Carl. Dr. Carl in Australia on Triple J, Australia's National Youth Network. I listen to his podcast as well because he does all science things and all that business. All right, time to go then, boys and girls. Um, I was going to, I had so much more to talk about today. Um, we'll have time next week to do everything I've got written down here and I'll just carry on until I complete what I wanted to talk about. Just very, very quickly, uh, I saw the Liberace film on Wednesday behind the candelabra. Very, very good film. Not for children. There's some sexual scenes in that, okay, I must warn you. Um, uh, but a really good film. Tells you about Liberace, his life and the boyfriend and uh, how it, they got together, how they split up, and uh, right at the very end, um, he dies of AIDS. Um, we are actually spared the period where he was gradually becoming ill and iller. That's not in the film. It kind of goes from where where the boys had split up to him laying in bed dying the whole illness bit they've completely left out which i think is nice it's a really good film go and see it but not for children okay there's 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 bits of sex in there and all that thank you very much for watching and listening to the show today i'm sorry it's a little bit shorter but as i say must get out the door now boys and girls uh, i'll see you again live here next friday at 10 30 uk time don't forget do send us an email if you're with us for the first time perhaps and you've seen the advert on facebook i'd like to know that as well so i know that facebook advert's working as well okay once again chris at united king KingdomTalk.co.uk is the email address. I'll see you next Friday at 10.30. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye now.